Massive win for the Arizona Cardinals in prime time. They now go to three and four and stay within the division race. But there's still a big mystery out there. What is going on with Marvin Harrison Jr. and the rest of this wide receiving core? Let's get started. Different ways to get this thing done today. Are you, are you confident the receivers are going to start right Yeah, 1,000%. 1,000%. going on everybody welcome back into another video definitely do me a huge favor smack up that like button and subscribe for more arizona cardinals content on the channel we're covering the arizona cardinals throughout the entirety of the 2024 season so subscribe it up it's absolutely for free but now we gotta we gotta keep it going it's got to translate you know what i mean because we're good enough where it can translate i know that all right everybody let's go and dive right into it let's talk about the aftermath the arizona cardinals versus the la chargers and what an absolute huge win for the cardinals in prime time to get their third win in the season right a good momentum swing here for kyler for jonathan gannon this cardinals organization this fan base just everything as a whole everything arizona sports this is an absolute huge win because the alternative was the Cardinals dropping to, to two and five, right? So obviously three and four, a, a great start to the 2024 season. And let's see if we can build off of this. And let's see for the future that the Cardinals maybe can more stack up some more wins. Now, what we want to see is consistency, right? We want to see stacking wins. And that's not something that we've seen um, in the 2024 season so far. But I got faith. I got confidence. Let's see what happens here. Now, let's talk about this game just in general. The Cardinals came to State Farm Stadium in their own home, and they won an ugly, sloppy, defensive game. That's kind of the, the best way to describe this game in a nutshell, right? We had James Conner make some, making some absolute huge plays when he probably should have got tackled for a one-yard loss. He makes three or four yard gain, right? It's an amazing thing to see James Conner right now in the prime of his career, and he's the Arizona Cardinals running back. It's an absolute wonderful thing to see. Now, I got to give kudos over to Kyler Murray as well. He made some plays with his legs, and he, he played a pretty good game. I'm not going to lie. He played a pretty good game. Now, here's the big concern, right? The, the, the big thing that's kind of floating around what's happening with the Arizona Cardinals offense, because let's call it like it is. This offense still isn't running as efficiently as we want it to run now you can look at the numbers here and take a look at the wide receivers you know production it's astounding right i don't know why the wide receivers aren't getting involved in this offense and i'm talking about greg dorch michael wilson and marvin harrison jr like the numbers that we're seeing here is absolutely wild now this type of game we mentioned this before that this chargers team this defense is really good. Like, it's a really, really good defense. So you're going to need to win an ugly game like this, and the Cardinals did it. So we got to give kudos to where kudos is. But we got to get this offensive wide receivers involved in the game plan. Now, we've seen a couple things here from Marvin Harrison Jr., a really good uh, couple catches here and there. That's the type of stuff that we need to see early in the game, in my opinion. I don't think it's the fault of you know, one person, I don't think this is Kyler or, or Marvin or, or Drew Petzing. I think as a whole, the offense needs to run better, right? More efficiently. So Marvin Harrison Jr., to me, what I would like to see is getting him the rock more consistently in the beginning of the game. We've seen already that, that Marvin Harrison Jr. has sometimes the, the case of the, the dropsies, right? We know this. It's such a hard thing to go from the collegiate level to the NFL level. What we need at this, from this coaching staff and the Cardinals organization is to not so much cater to Marvin Harrison Jr., but build this man's confidence up. We've already seen Marvin Harrison Jr. in certain plays where A, he knows he's not getting the ball. B, it's a run play where he just looks kind of lazy, right? It almost kind of looks like he's jogging. It almost looks like he's like he's not even involved in it. Now, there was a specific play here where Marvin Harrison Jr. was open, but Kyler Murray drops it over to uh, Trey McBride, which wasn't a bad mistake, but it, it, it was a good read. And, and Kyler Murray threw the ball over to Trey McBride. And you kind of see Marvin Harrison Jr. do this, right? I'm not sure what that was about. I'm not sure if he was frustrated because he's not getting the ball, right? This is a situation where we do not want to be in, right? Is this one of those things where Kyler Murray feels more confident in James Conner and, and feels more confident in Trey McBride because they don't drop balls? Maybe, but here's the thing. Everybody drops balls, right? James Conner had, you know, Aldo played very good. He had a very potential costly fumble, right? He did have a potential drop as well. Greg Dorch had a drop as well. What I'm trying to avoid is I don't want Kyler to look at Marvin and say, oh, I don't trust you. I'm not throwing the ball to you, right? If Marvin's open, 
throw him the ball, right? And if he drops it, then, then we're dealing with a situation like that, right? Now, there's a specific video clip going around the internet again about a potential miss from Kyler Murray. Now, this was a scramble play from Kyler Murray, so maybe his eyes weren't down the field, but this is kind of one of those things as well where it doesn't really seem like Marvin Harrison Jr. is the first option for, for, for Kyler Murray at all, right? And the announcer actually said that as well. Now, to me, when I look back at that play and this was going to be the Greg Dortch touchdown, I probably wouldn't have thrown it to Marvin Harrison Jr. either because it it almost did seem like he was doubled right and it seemed like it was a slant route there was a guy right there right on the bottom so you could potentially get an, um, an interception so the the route tree was good but the idea that you know kyler wasn't even looking his way to begin with maybe he knew the defense i don't know but even the announcers came out and said you know He's not even looking his way, but we got a touchdown, so it's not that big of a deal. So I need this Arizona Cardinal offense to get this wide receivers going, right? That's Marvin, that's Michael, that's Greg Dorch. Now, Zay Jones did make his debut, you know, in the 2024 season. Really wasn't effective at all. I'm not sure if you blame that on Zay. I'm not sure if you blame that on, you know, Kyler, but there was a pass that was not, you know, very good uh, when it came down to it, or maybe Zay just wasn't in the right spot. We don't 100% know, right? But regardless, it almost kind of seems like the consistent issue that we have on this offense is quarterback not you know, being on the same page with the wide receivers. Now, the good thing is that we got a weapon like Trey McBride. The good thing is that we got a good weapon in the backfield like, you know, a James Conner. I just don't want to be in a situation where we're playing a team like the Miami Dolphins or the Commanders or, or even the Green Bay Packers and the offense can't get going because the wide receivers aren't a, aren't a big focal point, right? Or at least Kyler Murray's not, you know, throwing the ball over to them. Now, like I said, this game... It was an ugly, sloppy, defensive type of game, and we needed to win a game like this, right? And it's very, very good. But if we were playing any other team, the Cardinals might have not won this game, right? So, hey, have you heard of NFL All Day? This really cool way to collect and own official NFL highlights. You can collect some of the biggest plays in football, and now they're even adding the top rookies, just like Marvin Harrison Jr. and others from this year's 2024 draft class. Basically, you buy a pack with moments, like a touchdown or a game-changing interception, and each one of them is unique. They're all tied to a blockchain, so it's like owning a piece of the NFL that's totally yours. Plus, with the new rookie class added, you can pull a moment from one of the league's rising stars right from the start. What's awesome is that you can hold on to them or trade and sell them with other collectors. Some of the rarer moments, especially those from breakout rookies, can go up in value. So it's not all about collecting. It's also a fun way to invest in the future of the game, and there are always new challenges and events where you can earn even more moments. It really feels like you're a part of the NFL community. In one of my vintage packs, I was able to pull the incredible Anias Williams with a huge pick six in 1999 against the now Commanders. For my most recent packs, I was able to pull more Marquise Hollywood Brown in 2023 taking an end around pass against the Commanders and Rondo Moore taking a pitch out of the backfield against the Seattle Seahawks. Seriously, now is the perfect time to jump in. Grab a pack and see what you pull. Come on over to NFL all day right now and let's get started. I, I, I need this to get better, right? I'm already starting to see a little bit of things here and there from Marvin Harrison Jr. body language wise that I'm not liking at all. So I, I need this coaching staff to step in, put their arm around him and give this young man confidence. They need to give this young man confidence. And I get it, right? A lot of people like to compare the wide receivers that were, were chosen in the first round, whether you say it's Malik Neighbors or, or, or even, you know, Brian Thomas Jr., I still think the fourth overall pick should and always will be Marvin Harrison Jr. If you say anybody else was in that fourth overall spot, they would have gone Marvin Harrison Jr. Seriously, they would have. So I don't think this is a, an indication that he's a bad wide receiver. No, a couple things. He's a rookie, ladies and gentlemen. And then B, it doesn't help that the Cardinals are a run first type of team. Do I have confidence that this coaching staff will get it right? I mean, per, you know, Jonathan Gannett, he seems pretty confident. But of course, with the win, a lot of these things kind of go under the rug. And we don't really address it till the Cardinals lose. So, I mean, obviously, a step in the right direction for the Cardinals organization with the win. But if we were just functioning to where our offense is, you know, looking very, very good, then I don't think I would be really having this, this conversation or this topic because... Like I said before, this was an ugly win, right? But the whole third down efficiency, still a problem. I'm not sure if you guys noticed that, but the, the third down efficiency in this game wasn't any better than, you know, any other game in the last three or four weeks. The Cardinals third down efficiency was 
two for seven. Like, it wasn't good at all. Now, we cleaned up the penalties. That was really fantastic. But the third down efficiencies where we're really, really struggling to get this going, right? Now, what happens with this Cardinals organization now, right? We're sitting at three and four. We got the trade deadline looming. I know Buda Baker's name has been kind of floated around with the idea of potentially trading him. I hope we don't. I hope Buda Baker stays as an Arizona Cardinal. I want to keep him here. But what happens? Do the Cardinals go after an edge rusher? Because I think that if Darius Robinson comes back and we get an edge rusher, this defensive line automatically gets upgraded, right? Now, let's think for the future. What if the Cardinals do get an edge rusher and then Darius Robinson comes back and we got this edge rusher for a couple years after this year, we get BJ Ojolari back. This defensive line is automatically upgraded. So I hope, I hope that the front office is looking at where the Cardinals are at right now and they're looking at the division and they potentially go after somebody. Now, maybe Hassan Reddick might not be attainable anymore. Seems like he's working out a deal with the Jets, but I heard Max Crosby's name out there. I heard uh, Miles Garrett's name being thrown out there. Somebody that we can make the X factor on that edge position for this front office to go after somebody. And I think that if the Cardinals do, maybe not in 2024, I don't think anybody's thinking Super Bowl, but if we're thinking about 2025, then our defensive line is automatically upgraded with BJ Ojolari, the guy that you decided to bring in, and then hopefully Darius Robinson works out to what we all hope that he works out to. So ladies and gentlemen, what are your thoughts here on the Arizona Cardinals week seven victory over the Los Angeles Chargers? Let me know in the comments below. Appreciate y'all for tuning in as always. Have a great rest of your day and go Cardinals.